Hello, my name's Ben. And my name's Josh. Welcome back to FPL Graduates. And welcome back to another video where in this video, we're going to be revealing our Game Week 36 teams. We are going into this game week both on Green Arrows. Um, so we're really looking forward to getting into this. Not many game weeks to go. A double coming up on the horizon as well. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so and let's get straight into it. Okay, so we're going to get cracking into my team at the moment. Despite what Ben thought, I was in a green arrow. I'm currently on a red arrow before Thursday's games um, against Chelsea versus Spurs. I don't really see it turning into a green one unless Petrovic saves about four penalties or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I'd expect in a red arrow this week anyway just because I took the minus four hit. Um, and my team just got decimated by injuries in defence, which we'll obviously discuss here now. Um, so in goal, we've got Dubravka this week, Burnley away. I'm just hoping that Nick Pope stays out of the team for at least one more week um, so I can get him for that double game week in 37. Um, obviously, a decent fixture for Newcastle. Not expecting a clean sheet, to be honest. I just don't think their defence is necessarily too good. But I'm just going to play the fixtures in, case, in this sort of case of the goalkeeper. Maguire is up next. He could be my transfer in this week for Connor Bradley. Um, I need, a, well, I want a like for like value replacement, um, which is 4.2 million. Not because I don't have any funds to do it, but if I save my cash in the bank, it allows me to go from Van Heck or Gusto next week up to Trippier. Um, we had reports this week that Trippier has gone to Dubai to see his like physio staff, and basically Newcastle are hoping that he's back for the first game of double game week 36. And obviously he'll be a massive differential if I can get him in, and obviously a really good FPL asset as we've seen. So Maguire comes in mainly for the attacking threat, as we mentioned in our transfer targets video. If you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out. And then the rest of the fence sort of picks itself because I've got a lot of injuries here at the moment. Porro, Liverpool away. He had some great attacking data against Arsenal. So I'm hoping he sort of recreates that against uh, Liverpool. And I think Liverpool's defence obviously much worse than Arsenal. So I feel like that could be made of sort of decent effort from him. And then Gabriel as well. Bournemouth at home. It would be interesting to see the sort of ownership of Arsenal defence. I feel like a lot of wildcarders did keep them. So it would be interesting to see if they are still over 100% EO. But he's obviously the best in terms of attacking data for Arsenal. So he goes in there. What's your thoughts on that, Ben? I don't see too many clean sheets this week from you, to be fair. Um, obviously, Dubravka, Burnley away. Newcastle's form hasn't been great away from home. But I think it's the better pick out of the two that you do have. Maguire, again, I think is there for attacking threat, really. And you're looking at double game week 37 is really sort of the 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 week to really push on and, and go ahead so i don't mind that at all the same can be said for pedro Porro, and i actually don't think this is a bad shout at all i don't think there's a clean sheet there but i certainly think that there's attacking returns yes it didn't look great against arsenal but that's an elite defensive team and spurs still managed to score two against them so i do think there's a potential there for pedro Porro to get an attacking return against liverpool and then gabriel i think it again like i said he selects himself the attacking data is good I think it's going to be sort of 120% EO for that Arsenal defence there or thereabouts, depending on your rank. Um, so you may be hoping for an attacking return there as well. All in all, it's not a bad defence. There's attacking returns there, but I don't think there's too many clean sheets. Moving on to the midfield, then we're playing a 3-4-3 this week. We've got Cole Palmer up first, West Ham at home. Uh, obviously, home fixtures for Palmer are his bread and butter. He's got a lot more returns at home, similar to Anthony Gordon this season, than he does away from home. On penalties, of course, as well. And West Ham are one of the worst defences in the league this season. Really nice fixture for him, but as always, really high-owned asset. Next up, we've got Kevin De Bruyne. Huge differential. Wolves at home this week. I think it's a good fixture. Wolves got a lot of defensive injuries, so it'll be interesting to see how Man City shape up against them. Um, yeah, just loved owning him and really looking forward to owning him for the last three game weeks of the season. Son, Liverpool away. It's interesting with him because I think although these fixtures like the Arsenal game and this game, they do suit him better. I just think he's just fell off a cliff really in the last month or so. Obviously, he got the penalty goal against, uh, against Arsenal, sorry. But yeah, I just think his attacking data has not been there. I think he just sort of needs a break, really. He had such a great start to the season. Um, and yeah, it's just sort of tailing off towards the end. But let's hope he can get some sort of attacking returns against Liverpool this weekend. Um, and then Phil Foden as well. He was ill in game week 35. At the time of recording, no update on him at the moment. But hoping he should probably recover if it's just an illness uh, with a week-long break. So yeah, that's the midfield. Ben, what's your thoughts? Yeah, really like the differential double Manchester City midfield. Not many managers are going to own that. Obviously, going for the risk that they don't keep the clean sheet or at least they score a lot more um, than, than the 
for the points that each defender will get for that clean sheet. I agree with Son. He just looks like a bit of a burnt-out player at the moment, but his penalty potential is always there. Um, no matter who Tottenham play against, they'll just go for it. Um, and then, yeah, Palmer, a consideration as a differential captain. Potentially, West Ham just defensively aren't that great. They concede a lot of goals, um, but they also do score them as well. So I can understand the reasoning for, for the benching of Petrovic in that regard as well. OK, and then moving on to the front three. Erling Haaland up first. Wolves at home. Obviously, coming off the bench against Nottingham Forest. I expect him to start against Wolves. Um, obviously, getting those minutes off the bench. Um, captain for me at the moment this week. Um, I think, yeah, you just just seeing him take the goal at the weekend just like oh god I've got to captain this guy again um so yeah probably a bit of scarcity there as well um in terms of his EO um especially at my rank at the moment although I do want to push push into the top 1k don't want to be too rash we've still got the bench boost in 37 that can spring us forward a few hundred places hopefully uh we've got Izak as well again a super highly owned asset Burnley away he did have my armband when Haaland didn't score um, and then I firmly switched it to Haaland after he did. Um, really nice option and again, really high owned. So no, not too many gains there, but obviously not too much lost. Uh, and then Rasmus Hoyland is sort of the 50-50 between him and Garnacho this week. Obviously got taken off early against uh, Burnley, which I was really disappointed in because... Like I said in the transfer targets video, Anthony was getting all the big chances, which is really frustrating. Because I feel like when Hoyland gets his chance, he usually takes it. So hoping that he gets more minutes this week. Obviously, Garnacho for me, he isn't a minutes risk at the moment. But if Marcus Rashford is in, like returning to the squad against Palace, I think there is a consideration for his minutes to be docked a little bit. Um, Anthony has played okay since being into the team. So yeah, what's your thoughts on that sort of dilemma, Ben? Who would you play between Hoyland and Garnacho at the moment? Really, really difficult decision, actually, because you, you can see both sides of the argument on starting both of them. I'd probably lean more towards um, Hoyland over Garnacho just because if the chance are being created, they're going to go to Hoyland rather than rather than Garnacho. And I think the ceiling is slightly higher. It's a really difficult one. I wouldn't like to be the you just having to make that decision because a triple up on United is uh, fairly biased, maybe. Um <laughs> But yeah, no, I think that's a dilemma which, you know, either way, you know, if United do well, I can see both of them hauling. If United do badly, I can see both of them blanking. So it's a tough one because you have to bench one because I wouldn't bench them for anyone else. Um, I would start Hoyland. I'd be the same as, as what you currently have at the moment. Yeah. And then on my bench, as Ben mentioned, Petrovic, obviously West Ham at home. Not the terrible fixture. If you had him, I'd probably start him. I think there's a lot of saves there to be had if you were going to start him, but definitely not a clean sheet with the way that Chelsea defend at the moment. Um, Garnacho, as we mentioned, decent option, but for me, just edging Hoyland ahead of him at the moment. And then Van Heck and Gusto just waiting for an update. Obviously, Gusto, when he was speaking to Chelsea Fan TV last week, he was set aiming for that West Ham game to be back. If he does play, it does give me a bit of a benching headache between him and Porro. Um, but I just don't think he'll get 90 minutes straight away if he was to return after an injury anyway. So I'd probably lean just Porro and Van Heck. Just frustrating how he got injured after the deadline. Not ideal, but he is currently there. And I probably wouldn't start him ahead of Porro anyway, just because I don't think there's clean sheet potential for Brighton. And I, there is no attacking threat with Van Heck pretty much. Okay, so moving on into my team. In the defence, I've gone with Petrovic um, against West Ham at home. It's the best of a bad couple between him and Anana for the fixtures this week. But I knew that was always going to be the case with the double game week just around the corner. I'm looking to bench boost next week as well. So looking forward to that. Um, in the defence, Fabian Scher is in there at the moment. Eddie Howe said it was just tightness in the hamstring. So I fully anticipate him starting in game week 36. I just think he's so crucial to Newcastle. They've got so little defenders and centre-backs that he's just got to start. He's very important to the way that Newcastle play. Gvardio is also in there off the back of his 15-point haul that I got for him last week. I think Wolves at home is a fantastic fixture. It's a time of the season where City will grind out those results, and I think another clean sheet surely is on the cards here. And then Gabriel Bournemouth at home, just like Josh, I've kept him in. Um, obviously not going to make too many games from the clean sheet, but I've got it as coverage there, so it doesn't damage my rank there too much. Josh, what are the thoughts on the defence? Is there a little more clean sheet potential here? 
Yeah, definitely. I think so. Obviously, Gavardi, oh, you'd expect them to keep a clean sheet at home. Despite that, though, obviously, City de- tend to just concede those goals when you expect them the most to keep clean sheets. Um, I think they got very lucky against Forest not uh, to not keep one there. With I think there's over two expected goals for Forest in the end, um, which is absolutely crazy. Um, for me, I'd probably go Onana over Petrovic just because United concede so many shots. I think both keepers will concede. It's just a case of save potential there. So it'd be interesting to see who outscores who. But at the end of the day, I don't think it'd be by much anyway. And yeah, it'd be interesting to see who share. Obviously, a hamstring injury, although it might be insignificant. Um, obviously, it is a massive risk to sort of start him straight away again. So it'll be interesting if they do. Obviously, not a lot of numbers at the back line. So probably going to have to, to be honest. Okay, so moving on into midfield, and it's looking fairly template for myself, but with a big decision to make on the bench, which we'll get into in a little bit. First of all, we've got Bruno Fernandes, Crystal Palace away. Really happy to have him in. It's a it's a big one against Crystal Palace away. They've just got to get a result. And Bruno's underlying numbers have been fantastic. Although, yes, their finishing for Manchester United hasn't been great. I think Phil Foden comes back into the starting eleven after his illness um, against Wolves at home, or at least that's what I'm hoping for anyway. I think he's a great pick for the end of the season. He's been just coming up clutch, almost like De Bruyne has been for Manchester City. So to have two players like that is seriously phenomenal. Uh, Cole Palmer, West Ham at home. Like Josh said, that's his bread and butter home fixtures against poor defences. I think he can come away with at least one, if not two, attacking returns. Gordon is an interesting one because this is the benching dilemma that I have. Gordon's data away from home hasn't been great. And it's looking like, I'm going to say it, Jackson's on the bench at the moment for me. I'm really tempted to start him over Anthony Gordon just because Chelsea at home are a lot better going forward than Newcastle are away from home. And then finishing off the midfield is Hyung min Son away at Liverpool. Again, I think this fixture is ready made for him, despite him not looking too great in recent weeks. Josh, what's the thoughts on the midfield and the potential benching dilemma here? Yeah, it's, it's the best midfield that Wildcard could have chosen, probably pre-deadline. Um, really nice options. I think Fernandes would be a good option against Palace. Be interested to see how United play. I fully expect them to play on the counter attack against them, which will suit them down to the ground. Um, and yeah, Gordon versus Jackson, interesting one. Um, I think the data points towards Jackson, but your head probably points towards Gordon. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. If I was in your shoes, I'd probably go Jackson, just because I think the upside's a little bit more there, and you've got Isaac as well. So the chances are when you know if Gordon was to return, Isaac usually returns too. So uh, yeah, that's my current thoughts on that. Okay, so moving on up front, and as we heard earlier, we do have Isaac up front. I think, you know, like Josh said, if Gordon's going to get a return, it'll be from Isaac or vice versa. And then we've got Haaland up top as well on the captaincy. Best captaincy option this week by far, especially after he scored that goal. He just looked fantastic, didn't he? So, yeah, left foot, right foot, he'll score it with both. So I do anticipate a start against Wolves. I probably anticipate between 65 and 70 minutes. He won't get the full game, I don't think. But I think that's enough time for everyone really to warrant captain in this week. Um, and then on the bench, obviously, we talked about Jackson. He's on the bench. Very, very tempted to start him over Gordon based on the rationale here that, that Josh even said now. Like, looking at it from that perspective... Jackson could be the the bigger differential here at home. And the Isaac kind of covers him as well. Anana on the bench as well as Pedro Porro and Van Heck. Josh, thoughts on that front line and the overall scene? Yeah, I think it's good. Like you say, you got that 150-50 this week, similar to me with the Garnacho or Hoyland or Gordon or Jackson. Um, be interested to see who you go with. But yeah, I think you've got it nailed on in terms of the selections. And yeah, good luck, mate. Okay, so that wraps up our Game Week 36 team reveals. Let us know what your thoughts are on our teams in the comments. Who would you go for? Would you go for Hoyland or Garnacho, Or who would you go for between Gordon and Jackson? I was just going to try and remember them both there. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. And as always, please remember to like, comment and subscribe to the FPL Graduates YouTube channel. I've been Ben. I've been Josh. And we'll see you guys later. Have a good game week, everyone. Well, you may rise, but you'll never make me